Are you more likely to be laid off if you're a remote worker? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm gonna break the data down. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff, and today I wanna to break down the latest employment data around layoffs, and specifically if they're targeting remote workers, and whether or not this is one of the worst markets to be a job seeker. But before we get into that, if you're interested in more job-related content, just like this directly from a corporate recruiter, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So the question of whether or not remote workers are targeted more frequently in layoffs, and the unfortunate answer is it looks like yes, and at least according to a survey done by the Wall Street Journal, remote workers indeed are the headline here says remote workers bear the brunt of when layoffs hit and the data shows that fully remote employees are more likely to be targeted and let go than their peers. So when we actually look at the data broken down, this is a, a chart by Live Data Technologies. Remote workers were actually 35% more likely to be laid off in 2023. We're seeing that trend continue here into 2024, where unfortunately, remote workers are still being cut. If you look at the latest, we talked about Wayfair already, but they're targeting remote staff mostly in their rounds of layoffs. I think they're They've got 1,650 people, 13% of their workforce. And of course, we've got all kinds of CEOs that are coming out saying that they wanna force their employees back into the office because they feel that there's better camaraderie, better collaboration, better ideas. And they just, there's a stigma now with remote work where you know two or three years ago, everybody was required to work remotely. We were all supposed to chip in and do our part. And now suddenly if you're remote, you're no good, you can't produce, you're a lazy person, you're a complainer, all this kind of stuff. It's kind of interesting how that narrative has changed so quickly and so suddenly. And so of course it doesn't surprise me at all that remote workers are being targeted more often. So we wanna take an even deeper look at the data. In 2023, remote workers were 35% more likely to be laid off. But not only that, they were also less likely to be promoted. And as there's a 31% difference in the number of people who've been promoted from remote versus in-office workers or in-office jobs. And we're also seeing a difference in the number of people who've been laterally promoted or demoted. So the ability to move across the company. And furthermore, and this is something that the CEOs probably will hang their hat on, is that remote workers are 31.9% more likely to quit their job and leave for another opportunity than their in-office counterparts. And remember, this is a sample size of 2 million white collar employees. So this is not an insignificant amount of people to pull from. So the data really suggests that indeed, people who are remote are gonna be more likely to be targeted for a layoff. And to that end, unfortunately, there's some more companies who are adding to the trend of additional layoffs here in January. Most recently, we've got Microsoft, which has announced a 1900 person layoff for their Activision Blizzard Xbox employees. And that's about 8% of their gaming staff. So it seems like gaming is starting to be hit very hard. I read some other article that said that the gaming uh, companies have overhired over the last couple of years, and now they're trying to right size their businesses. And I guess the excuse was, well, Everybody was sitting at home in the pandemic, more people were playing games, these companies kind of ramped up and now they're trying to right size. So if you're in the gaming industry, you know, it, it might be worth you kind of paying attention to what's going on around you, read the tea leaves here and maybe keep that resume up to date because it does look like gaming inside of the tech industry is being hit relatively hard. Um, REI has announced a reasonable layoff, 357 people, so not huge. I don't know how big REI is, but I, I'd imagine that's probably a, um, not a huge percentage of their workforce, but Salesforce, of course, we've seen them before. Salesforce has announced another 700 people that they're laying off, which is in addition to the 8,000 jobs that they cut last year. And this is a 70,000 person workforce. So if I'm working at Salesforce, I'm probably not waiting around for the other shoe to drop. I'm updating my resume and starting to do some targeted networking right now. Business Insider is also cutting their workforce by 8% in order to refocus, as well as Time Magazine's got 15%, but that's kind of small number of people in the grand scheme of things because their editorial staff has already been being depleted by AI and other things. So we've seen a lot of stories about that coming out. Fortunately, SAP has also announced 8,000 people will be laid off as part of a restructuring. eBay, which sometimes I forget that they even exist because they were so big back in the day, but it doesn't seem like anybody really hangs out in that space anymore. But eBay is laying off 1,000 workers uh, or 9% of their total staff. 
And then we've got a used cars company's Vroom, 800 people. That's 90% of their workforce is shutting down. So that's a major layoff. I wonder if they're even gonna stay in business. And in keeping in line with the editorial industry, LA Times has announced a 20% reduction, 100 positions there. Figma, also a design company, is starting to offer buyouts for their employees. Um, if we wanna look just specifically at what's going on in the tech space, we can head over to layoffs.fyi and we can see what the trends are. Now, this does not count anything that's non tech related so you kind of have to look at this from that that lens but as we look at the number of employees who are laid off you can see that we were pretty low heading into the latter part of the year and so as of right now is it a major spike up i don't think it's a huge spike up as far as the trends are concerned it does feel like it but we are seeing a lot more employees so we're seeing a, a pretty sharp increase in the number of employees from december till now so number of, of companies um, is uh, laying off is increasing significantly so we went from 56 up to 93. the total number of employees though is 7,000 in december and we've seen that increase to 24,000 as of uh, this is the 26th as i'm recording this so you know by the time we get through this is the weekend so by the time we get through the weekend um, hopefully this number won't grow too much more than this but you can see the total number of people affected is as high as it's been since oh gosh uh, march of this this past year and if we look at january though from a year ago till now kind of see that bloodbath that happened versus where we are today um, of course, January a year ago was much, much worse. Um, you know, we're 80, 89,000, almost 90,000 people lost their job inside of the tech industry and 277 tech companies laid off. So in comparison to that period of time, we're still way below trend line. However, we are seeing an increase. Now I'm gonna be paying attention to this number as we head into February, March. Hopefully we're gonna see it slow down just like we did in the the first part of the first quarter of 2023. And then if we look at kind of a different representation visually, you can kind of get a, an idea, SAP headlines here. We've also got uh, Telefonica, um, which is in Spain. So this is a Spanish uh, layoff. Uh, Xerox is cutting. We talked previously about Xerox 15%. Microsoft 1900, we just talked about that one. Unity, so that's software. Um, so again, we're seeing a lot in the software gaming space, Wayfair. Uh, I think I got eBay in here, Cloud um, Software Group, Citrix, um, and then some smaller kind of Riot games was one of them as well. So we're seeing an increase, unfortunately, uh, a spiked increase after the first of the year, which is not super uncommon. A lot of times companies will wait till after the first of the year and then announce layoffs. And so that seems to be consistent. It's just what kind of trending are we looking at going into the rest of the you know, first and second quarters of this year? I just don't know. So we'll just keep an eye on that for you. And as these layoffs increase, there's also companies that are talking about smaller raises for 2024. So this certainly isn't shaping up to be the year of the employee. And this is coming from a survey done by Resume Builder last year of 600 business leaders, but 49% of them said that they wouldn't be giving any cost of living upgrades or adjustments, COLA, in other words, to employees next year. 26% of them said that they wouldn't be giving any kind of raises at all. And of the ones that are planning to give any kind of raise at all, 48% are only gonna give a 3% or less bump. And additionally, more than half of them are anticipating layoffs. So it's just not shaping up to be a great time to be a job seeker. And as this bad news just seems to keep on stacking on top of each other for the job seeker, this comes at a time when we're in one of the worst inflationary rates of at least my lifetime. And we can look at the data here. And even though they tell us that the inflation rate's coming down and is getting back into control, if you look at the, the data, it doesn't look so pretty. Now this is going back about 10 years, but February of 2013, the inflationary rate was 2% and at one point in time, in 2015, it dropped down really low, down to less than a percent. And we've seen it kind of spike up and down to a high of nearly 3% in 2018, but then it spiked way down right as the pandemic was starting to only 0.6%. And then of course, we're all aware of what's been happening over the last few years where it's spiked and skyrocketed up to an astronomical 9.1%. And that peaked in June of 2022. And sure, the interest rates rising and the other activities that the Fed has done has certainly brought the interest rate down from this runaway inflation. 
but we're still way above the trend line over the last 10 years. We, you know, we're as of December, we're at 3.4 percent, which is higher than at any point in the last 10 years. So when you have it spike so high, and then you say, "Well, it's improved," you have shorts. Of course, it's improved, but it's still really high compared to the rest of you know the recent history. And when you look at mortgages, it's the same thing. They'll say the interest rates have really dropped and everything is great. But when you look at the historical trend line, you know, over here in 2023, it spiked at nearly 8% in October of 20 uh, October of 2023. So yeah, from there till now, it actually has dropped significantly. It's dropped over, it's about a whole point. But historically, we're way above the trend line. And this is not even factoring in the, the price of overinflated real estate, where no matter where you look, the real estate is just extremely overpriced. So the average consumer cannot afford to buy a house. They're, in some cases, they've signed on for rents that they can't afford. And they've got car payments. If you look at the uh, consumer price index for trucks, the same thing. You know, Beginning of the pandemic, it was quite low. And then it spiked way up. And sure, it's coming down. You'll see all these news articles that say, well, we're improving there. But the fact of the matter is, is that we're still priced way above where cars were even just three years ago. So it's not even a close comparison, but people still need cars. And when you get laid off, you still need the vehicle to get to and from a job. So you're forced to buy these cars that are overinflated. Dealerships have you know charged an arm and a leg. I think I saw somewhere the, the average note payment for a car is over $1,000. And in most cases, that's the cost of a lot of people's rent. Well, at least it was previously, but now we're seeing that spiking up. And then of course, groceries and all of the other expenses, I think even car insurance has been going way up. There's uh, some uh, data around that as well. So the problem is, is that we have this runaway inflation. We have all of these higher prices just about everywhere. You look, I mean, I, my, my grocery bill is, I think, probably 30, maybe 40% more expensive than it was even probably a year and a half ago. But if you're an unemployed person and you're, I mean, certainly unemployment insurance, the, the payments that you get from the unemployment office are not keeping pace with this and wages are not keeping pace with the, the inflation. And now we're seeing more and more companies forcing remote workers back into the office. And now you've got additional expenses there, but we're just seeing that this is one of the worst times to be a job seeker because not only do you have the lack of jobs, people are getting laid off left and right, wages are being stunted, and we've got skyrocketing inflation that is just destroying the middle class in this country. But this just reinforces the need to be the CEO of your own career because you can't rely on an employer. Loyalty is out the window at this point, and you can't rely on the government to come save the day because let's face it, look at the condition of the world right now. And if you're interested in learning how to do that, I actually do have a free newsletter you can check out. You can sign up for on my website. If you like this kind of content, would appreciate a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It does really help the channel. And if you need any additional help with your job search and getting back into this market, even though it's kind of tricky, there are things that you can do to set yourself apart. And I do teach how to do that. If you go check out my website, alifeafterlayoff.com, you can learn all about the options there. But anyway, I'll be keeping a pulse on what's going on in the market and I will share them with you here on this channel. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you on the next one.